What's going on there YouTube? I got a brand new video for you guys here today. I'm going to be talking about 10 decks plus one because I think I might actually have 11 on this list uh, that I think that are going to be viable or arguably some of the best decks if not the best decks along with some additional picks that are probably outlier decks, rogue strategies, a little bit lower tier meta decks that you guys can probably not only expect to play against but also probably be playing with for the current I'm going to call it an emergency ban list that we just got that's going into effect December 3rd, 2018. We recently just had Firewall Dragon banned, as most of you guys know. If you guys haven't seen my stream slash video on it, go ahead, check it out. I will have it. You guys can go check out the video. I kind of give my breakdown on the current list and what impact it had on the meta. We're supposed to be getting probably another one, I think, around January, more than likely. Hopefully, we get one before then um, that's a little bit more comprehensive and addresses a lot more issues. We're going to get into it. If you guys haven't enjoyed this video at the end of it, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Consider backing me not only on Patreon, but also checking out the merch down below. I got a bunch of new merch, hoodies, socks, and shirts. Really, really cool stuff. I finally have my full logo on there, so you guys should definitely check those out. It really mean a lot to me. I'd love to go to events and see people rocking that stuff. Um, I know I'm, I ordered a couple things for myself as well, so I'll probably feature that on my channel when I get it in. And you guys can get it before Christmas, so check that stuff out. Anyways, let's get into it guys. So, I'm actually going to go in reverse order. Most of the time people go from like lower tier to top tier. I'm actually going to go from probably what I think is going to be roughly around the top tier to the lower tier. Um, the bottom decks, and honestly this whole list isn't really comprehensive in the sense that I don't think one deck can like necessarily leapfrog the other or one deck is necessarily better than another. Um, I think this is just kind of like a rough guesstimate of what decks I think will probably be. Not only the most represented decks, but probably in the realm of the most, uh, the most powerful decks relative to everything else. So first and foremost, we're going to begin with Sky Strikers. Probably not only necessarily the best deck, but probably the most represented deck across the board. Um, I think it's a deck that a lot of people were unloading and a lot of the value dropped really low. And in addition to not getting hit by the ban list, a lot of people uh, were expecting that even if this deck got hit, maybe it got like engaged in two or something of the sort, it would still probably be relatively playable. So I think a lot of people surprisingly as low the value as this, uh, th this deck hit. I think it's still extremely powerful. It still has three engage, three widow anchor, has its raise. It has everything. And recently it got a little bit of a rarity bump in Shizuku. Of course, it came out as an ultimate in my OTS pack nine spoiler. You guys can check that out in the video. Um, I did do that as well as my ban list video. So I kind of put them together. Um, but I think Strikers is probably just gonna be the most played deck. It's a relatively fair deck. And I think it's just the fact that it has that high degree of consistency and it does literally what it wants to do virtually every time is why it's gonna be the probably the most represented deck initially and then as a result of that it's still one of the better decks so I wouldn't necessarily say it's the most powerful in terms of ceiling it just has that that sweet spot where it hits all the realms of uh, power consistency speed um, it just hits all those things so well which is why it'll probably be the initial front runner for best deck, so to speak, or one of the best decks. Now, of course, best deck is always a relative term based on what kind of meta you're gonna be playing against. If you're, of course, gonna be playing in an all striker meta, you can just build a deck that's completely anti strikers and just has like a 90% win rate against it and really flops against everything else. But because you play against 99% strikers, you're probably gonna win against them. So again, keep in mind, the term best deck is relative um, to everything else and what you're gonna be playing against. And it, of course, changes based on tech picks and what other decks people are playing from event to event, so keep that in mind. Uh, the next couple decks, we have Alter Guys. Alter Guys, much like Strikers, were not hit at all. I think they are gonna be another top deck. Um, they're very similar. Honestly, the top three decks are really similar in the sense that they're all control strategies. They're very oppressive decks. They're not really FTK strategies. They might have the potential every now and again to OTK you, whether it be Strikers, Widow Anchoring, and Shark Cannoning your monsters, whether it be Alter Guys just snowballing, kind of like Gear Gears, and just amassing a board, and then eventually getting out multiple Hexias, and just controlling the board with all their traps. They weren't hit at all. This deck is also a pretty good counter in some cases against Strikers because they can main deck Secret Village of the Spellcasters and Strikers are gonna have a hard time dealing with it, especially if that deck can deal uh, you know, with the Clara that they usually have to summon out. You'll have to have an immediate answer to Secret Village. I think Altergeist is gonna be a really, really strong pick to counter Strikers. And that's just one reason why I think Altergeist is still gonna be lingering on. I don't think it's necessarily the most powerful deck. Um, but I do just think it has that counter factor to a lot of the other decks, more so specifically the most represented deck, which again is Strikers. Next is Thunder Dragons. I think Thunder Dragons, 
Um, honestly, you could kind of toss them up between uh, Altergeist and, and Thunder Dragons, whichever one's going to be the next play. I think Thunder Dragons is still really powerful, some people say. Um, it's like a really strong hard counter against strikers, but I feel against a good striker player, if you can manage your Widow Anchors correctly and really just take all their monsters that they have on the board, uh, all their fusions, you can really just counter OTK them most of the cases, um, and you don't necessarily need to search with Engage. Yes, it sucks when they get the big mistake guy out on the field, but usually you can just Widow Anchor and it's not really a problem. Um, you can still play around a lot of their stuff. I think uh, Thunder Dragons is just another one of those Altergeist S decks that people are going to be using to counter Strikers. Although I will say it has a little bit more aggression, a little bit uh, higher of a ceiling in that power department relative to those other decks. And I think the fact that it can just get those big bodies out on the field makes it a great contender for the coming meta. Next is actually going to be... Uh, Probably the only category, and I'm going to call this a category, not one specific deck. Really just all the combo decks, specifically Gokis, uh, slash the Gumblar Turbo Dot decks, the Rongo Turbo decks, or the Danger Combo Turbo decks that really all kind of just try and do the same thing. And the only reason I'm putting this here is because, in the, and compared to all the other decks, all the other decks I have definitive names for them, it's just this one, I kind of lumped all the like combo decks or Wombo decks or OTK or Extra Link decks in one category because we don't really have like one definitive version of what that best combo deck might be uh, for this current format with Firewall Band, with Armageddon at one, with Malicious at two. I think Gokis can evolve and kind of regress back to playing more Gokis in their deck, a little bit more of a nice soul deck. They can still uh, potentially extra link you. They can still kind of commit to going into Gumblar. They can still splash dangers with Armageddon Knights and you know the Phantom Knights and still accomplish everything they need to do. They don't need Firewall. I know Brendan Beckman and a lot of the players I was testing against uh, before the last YCS I, I attended, I think uh, I think it was Dallas or whatever, whatever the last event I went to, or Columbus, excuse me, the 200th YCS, we were testing, and honestly, most of the time, they didn't even need to go into Firewall Dragon with that deck. They would just make Cerberus, Topologic, rip four cards out of the, your opponent's hand, and that would be it. Like, you wouldn't be able to come back. Even if you had a hand trap, uh, you would need multiple hand traps sometimes to play through that. So I think these combo decks are probably gonna be really good. Do I do think that Firewall Dragon offered them a little bit of a cushion because even if they weren't going immediately into that, they could use Firewall to bounce stuff back, keep going. So I think they're a little bit lower on the totem pole just on the basis of how many of the top decks, Strikers, Altergeist, and Thunder Dragons can really hard counter some of those decks. Um, and really put them in a position where the combo deck can't play and because it doesn't have that recovery It doesn't have that consistency that it might otherwise have um, It can struggle so I put it a little bit lower But again, I'm sure that someone is gonna come up with a really powerful combo deck Whether it's people just running the Rongo deck with like an immense amount of consistency with danger and all that other stuff So I think it's gonna be like Gumblar Dragon, which I definitely think should have been banned You guys probably saw that in my discussion if you guys watched that I kind of just lumped all the combo decks in one category for now until they can elevate. And I think that's the one category that has the opportunity to go higher or lower or even just stay in the one place compared to all the other strategies. Just because I think combo decks inherently have something that no other decks uh, have in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think that's just a much higher power ceiling, uh, a much more elevated um, capability overall. They're not as linear in most cases. Um, so I would definitely keep that in mind. I think a lot of the combo decks uh, as much as people think Firewall was the only thing, I think Gumblar not being hit and just a lot of other cards still existing. Like these decks still have a lot of powerful cards. They still have the Danger Engine as a splashable engine. They still have Gumblar. They still have a lot of Warriors, surprisingly. Danger is just really, really good in these decks. You don't need to be playing Dark Warrior Turbo. It could just be Danger, you know, Goki Turbo or whatever you want to call it. Or they could be playing the Rongo strategy to get Rongo and Imbiad or whatever his name is on the field with Bamboozling and just auto win because of that. So all these decks are in the same realm. Still really powerful. Don't underestimate any of these combo decks. They're still really, really good. And I think there's going to be a lot of iterations of them that players are going to be trying out. Next, and all these other decks that I'm going to be listing on from here on out are kind of going to be like a toss up. You can put them in really almost whatever order you want. But those top you know, four or five decks that I just mentioned thus far, uh, really I would say are gonna be remaining in that order or roughly the most played decks. Now, I think Cyber Dragons is gonna be another really hot pick. Um, I think it's a great deck overall. It's only really good going second though. I don't think it's as good going first for obvious reasons uh, that everyone knows. It hasn't been hit of course and never really needed, it never needed Firewall. It doesn't really need any of the other cards. Uh, all that, that are existent right now. Now one thing I did actually forget to mention that I really want to quickly briefly touch on is going back to the combo decks is they did get a third called by the grave back. 
So that does give them another option to, you know, another little tool to potentially have some more options to play through the hand traps that other decks might have access to. Hand traps are really kind of average against strikers, thunder dragons, and altar guys, in my experience. Like anytime you're playing against like a control based strategy or an oppressive strategy, hand traps are really just average against them because they're fair. It's usually a one for one exchange or at the very most like a plus one interaction. Usually against those decks, you want to have like blowout cards and hand traps don't do as much against them. So. I don't know, we'll have to see how hand trap selection uh, goes in this format and how people choose to, uh, you know, what hand traps they, they select as far as what are the best options for certain matchups um, and just in general that might be standardized across all matchups. Uh, but yeah, Cyber Dragons, going back to them, I think are going to be a cool pick. They're going to be one of those like lower, I wouldn't say lower tier, but just another kind of like rogue strategy uh, that you might see, though I do still think they're one of the most powerful decks if they can get going. Um, being able to put infinity or multiple infinities in some case out on the field is still really devastating. Uh, next, I want to touch on Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss, again, didn't really get touched. They still have all their dangers. They still have all their, you know, all their options. Burning Abyss is a really good resilient pick yet again. Yet again, my man Dante avoiding uh, the ban list, uh, not that he really needs to be banned, but just it's kind of like a run on joke at this point that Dante always avoids the ban list. Burning Abyss somehow always escape the bane of uh, the bane of the ban list. Um, I think it's just really interesting to see Burning Abyss are still able to thrive after this many years. And of course, the snake is still another free option that they have as a, as a three that they can summon out. Uh, the darks that they have access to, uh, beginning of the end, still bringing out three that they could potentially splash, allures. They have a lot of consistency. Um, even if they're not playing all those spells, they could simply just play all their monsters plus like three seconds late, which recently got reprinted as a super rare in OTS pack nine. So that's going to be a really cool option. Pendulums, the next deck, I think Pendulums, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, it's a deck that uh, there's always a couple players that out there put their mind to it, their soul to it, and they find a way to make Pendulums work to get out that Vortex Dragon, to get out uh, that single copy of Electromite and just make things work. I think it's a, you know, it still has the most unfair mechanic ever made thus far in Yu-Gi-Oh! The free soul charge mechanic every single turn. Uh, the built-in pendulum mechanic is really, really powerful. Of course, their consistency is diminished, their power is diminished, uh, but I think it's still a viable pick. I think you still might see this pop up every now and again as a lower tiers, but definitely a rogue meta deck that I would not underestimate just on the very premise that they do have that, uh, that specific built-in soul charge engine uh, every turn with pendulums. Uh, I think they still have a lot of cool options. I mean, honestly, they only really need to get out one Electromite to do all their other stuff, so um, usually they can still be very devastating. They still can get out Jackal, Vortex, plus something else. Some of them even play the Mist Valley Avion, which is really, really cool. Um, I think it's a little bit weaker in consistency, but I still think it's a really cool option nonetheless. And they can have multiple negations, so it's one of those kind of oppressive strategies. It's almost, if you really think about it, kind of like Thunder Dragons, where they get out some big bodies, and those big bodies kind of just try to oppress you with uh, negations or Floodgate-esque effects. So. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, next, we're going to go on to True Dracos. True Dracos were not touched at all. I think uh, very much so in the realm of the top decks that I mentioned, Strikers, Thunder Dragons, Altergeist. Uh, that deck is really, it tries to interact right now. Obviously, Masterpiece isn't a thing, but uh, it tries to just use Floodgates, kind of pick apart some of the things. I think Floodgates, like Rivalry and Gozen got a little bit weaker. Um, you know, I don't think, I think it's only relative to the decks that people are going to be playing, of course, uh, unless a combo deck just propels to the top deck right now, in which case Rivalry and Gozen will probably be a lot better. Uh, there Can Only Be One, of course, is also another great card that people have been using as a Floodgate, but True Draco didn't really see any, uh, any hits at all. It's just another deck that kind of just lingers on. It's kind of just that try and interact with the opponent, pop their stuff. It has great monster wipes and backer right uh, wipes, you know, three disciples, three heritage, um, the, the revival and the uh, uh, the one that has, I forget the name. Uh, th but, but the two traps that they have and the two spells really just are interactive in that regard. They're able to just pick apart boards so easily. I could definitely see a true Draco deck that's a little bit more tailored to going second against some of these decks. Um, being successful and that's one thing that I probably make a separate video on is I could actually see outside of some of the combo decks uh, really right now a lot of these decks might want to just choose to go second every time regardless of what deck they're playing simply because I feel when you're playing against more fair decks interactive decks control based strategies oppressive decks having that extra card is just so invaluable they're never really gonna kill you turn one yeah they might get some negations on board with their widow anchors or their you know the thunder dragons or their altar guys traps but really if you can effectively manage your resources and pick apart their stuff correctly uh, you can win because you're going second and I think uh, this format, based on what I'm seeing, we might see a lot more matches going to game three, going to time, a lot more extended matches, not ending as quickly because of the STKs 
and the crazy OTKs that some of these combo decks were putting out. So I, I would definitely expect a lot more time issues and a lot more time sensitive accommodations by players as far as their deck choice and selecting to go first or second. I think going second might be a little bit more advantageous right now, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next is Trickstars. Uh, Trickstars got their ultimate licorice. Good for you guys. Of course, the waifu dot deck that everyone seems to like, but then people just complain about and dislike, especially because of time, because of reincarnation still being at three. I don't think it's a good deck. I just think it's a one trick pony, really, in most cases. And it's a deck that, you know, it's still going to linger on. You'll still face it at tournaments. Hopefully, you'll be able to beat it, put those big beaters on board, make them struggle, play around those reincarnations, and you should be fine. But it is a deck that you'll encounter nonetheless. Trick Stars didn't see any hits, of course. Um, none of the things that really happen on the list are really going to, um, you know, affect that deck as a whole. Um, if anything, it maybe theoretically got a little bit weaker because the combo decks could really struggle against searching and everything. If you just get out a couple, you know, Licorice and Candine out on the field with Reincarnation, you could very much so disrupt a lot of those combo decks. But now, a lot of these other decks that are kind of back and forth with Strikers, Altergeist, and Thunder Dragons, etc., all these decks can kind of play through you reincarnationing them and they can put some big bodies out on the board quite easily in some cases. Next, we'll move on to ABCs. This is kind of just a casual pick that I threw there. I think this deck will see play specifically at the local level, um, more so than anything else, maybe even at the regional level, because now, even without Firewall being a thing, like now that Firewall is gone, of course, uh, people can play ABCs a little bit more freely. There's still Destrudo, there's still Ravines, there's still a lot of cool options that this deck can do. Um, I think ultimately it's just a budget option that we'll see play based on you know the ban list, not necessarily because it's a better deck or anything. It just got three, uh, you know, it's Assault Cores back to three, so it can play now, it's a viable deck. And then finally, the last deck, which is technically the 11th deck, but I think you could interchange this with ABCs, Trickstars, whatever other deck, is actually Cosmos. And while I don't think this deck is good, it wasn't really doing anything, I think because of Strikers and a lot of these other decks, being what they are, they really struggle with non-targeting abilities, i.e. Dark Destroyer or any of the other ships that, uh, that Cosmos have. I know my friend Gerardo at the 200th YCS took a Cosmo deck and he started out like 5-0, 6-0, and then he just had a little bit of bad luck and he didn't end up making top cut, but that showed me that that deck is still very much so viable. I mean, having three Dark Destroyers is really insane. It's one of the most best and most powerful boss monsters ever printed in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's easily accessible. It's a beat stick, you can't target it. It has 3,000 something attack, over 3k attack. It pops a card and it's a floater and it's a dark that interacts with the rest of your deck so easily. It, there's some crazy stuff that that deck can do and I would not underestimate it. That's one deck I never want to underestimate. It has a very strong matchup against Strikers. You can't Widow Anchor them, you can't Afterburner them, you can't do anything against them virtually. Altergeist very much so also struggle against that deck because you can't target them. A lot of the stuff that you do, Soliquitous and whatnot, all target. You can't really run over their monsters in most cases. Thunder Dragons, um, I think, uh, kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cosmos in some cases. I think they're a little bit more consistent and a little bit more oppressive. But um, yeah, Cosmos is the last deck I kind of wanted to touch on just because they have three Called by the Graves, they have their, uh, their Dark Destroyer at three now. I think they really just have everything other than Teleport Book being at full power. Um, it's, such, it's, it's a really, I think, going to be a rogue Dark Horse deck that people can play. And I'm sure there's other decks I didn't talk about and list here, but if I missed an, a, a deck or maybe you guys have a deferring opinion, feel free to let me know. These are just my initial thoughts. Of course, this is bound to change. Of course, the term best deck, if, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's really just a relative term. If one deck wins the next event and that is the most represented best deck, someone could very easily... Uh, build a deck that counters that deck going into the next event if people are assuming that's the best deck and just reverse sweep that deck and just take it and just demolish it because they're prepared for that quote unquote best deck and now that new deck that beat the best deck is the best deck but then people go to a strategy that comments says so Yu-Gi-Oh is a very volatile game especially at the competitive level um, even if there is a most represented deck that might not necessarily mean that it's 100% the best deck I mean keep that in mind I think the decks you can very well be sure to see are Strikers, Altageist, Thunder Dragons. Um, you'll probably see some combo decks here and there right off the bat. I think you'll see some Gumblar Turbo, Goki Turbo variants, maybe some Rongo Danger combo dot decks uh, in that mix. And then the Rogue picks or the lower tier or less seen decks, I'll say again, are Cyber Dragons, uh, Burning Abyss, Pendulums, True Dracos for sure. Uh, maybe some Trick Stars here or there at the local level. You'll definitely see ABCs above all else. 
Um, and then Cosmos, you'll probably see that as another dark horse pick. I think some players were trying to accommodate that deck and build it towards uh, beating Strikers if that's going to be the most represented deck initially. So we'll have to see. Uh, this was pretty much mostly an emergency ban list. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, of this list thus far. I'd very much be interested in reading you guys' comments. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Back me on Patreon. Check out my merchandise and uh, more videos to come. Hopefully I'll have some new format or quote-unquote new format uh, deck profiles for you guys very, very soon. Maybe I'll have some duels for my locals. Take care, guys. That has been uh, my top 10 plus one, technically, or some rogue meta picks uh, for the December 3rd, 2018 Forbidden and Limitus for the TCG. Finally, Firewall Dragon is banned. Hopefully, we have a depreciation in the OTK department slash FTK department. And hopefully, in all the, like, degenerate stuff going on. Because ultimately, at Yu-Gi-Oh, there's always going to be some degenerate stuff going on. Um, hopefully, we can just play through it. So, take care, guys. That has been my video. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to read you guys' comments. Make sure to comment down below. Take care, guys.